Very happy to give this report. This is, I think, the third or fourth update where I've had good news to bring you. You guys have hung along here, and I know it's been twisty turny, some stop signs, and we had some bad luck there. But things are looking up, so I'm happy to bring this news to you. We'll start out first with what we started out before, the kidneys, and the result we're looking at from Monday was the creatinine, and yes, it did drop yet again down to 1.88, which is fabulous. I'm happy across the two barrier. That's excellent. Now we just see what happens to that level when we remove one day of dialysis. Now remember, I didn't do dialysis this past Thursday, only Tuesday and Saturday. So we'll see what effect that has on the kidneys in terms of the, the added workload and what that value is on Monday. Right to the information from the oncologist, very important. What did they say? My oncologist said, yes, you've basically decreased confirming the results of a 50% drop in cancer load from the beginning, which was wonderful. Great to hear from my oncologist. He characterized me as, as probably a slow responder. I say, man, I'd rather be a slow responder than a no responder. But then he, he, he followed that up with what I've told you at least three or four times before that he's told me that it could just be an artifact of the fact that in 40 years he's never saw someone with plasma levels uh, of the serum proteins at my, my concentrations. It just could be that I have just such a large amount of this cancer in there. It basically was 100% in my bone marrow, these infected plasma cells. Maybe it's just a matter of long, a little bit longer time to root them out. The protocols are more vulnerable than the cancer being able to handle, you know, the, the protocol. So we'll see going forward. My oncologist and the team from Henry Ford had a little bit different take. Their take was, it was aggressive cancer I have because it, show, it was showing resistance to what we, they threw at it. This protocol looks like it's doing the job. And I asked Dr. Jana right off the bat, because she was getting to a point after she reviewed it, said, yes, you're, you know, your, your values are, are dropping. She agreed with, with my oncologist. And I asked her point blank, well, where does this leave us in terms of the stem cell transplant? And just she very quickly replied, well, I still would like to see these numbers even better. Suggestion then from her is we just continue the Darzalex, this new protocol with Darzalex, Revlimid and dexamethasone appears to be working, so no need to change that now. Continue with another two cycles, two more cycles, cycle three and four. Reevaluate as we have done just now, exactly at the end of essentially cycle four. That meeting is already set. That's set for June 25th. The Monday before that, June 17th, during my normal Bloomberg at at St. Mary's, we'll do the assays for the light chains and the electrophoresis as we did this time and have those numbers. That's not going to be too far off. We're actually continuing with the with the protocol anyway. We're practically in the middle of cycle three already. Same protocol as before, the Darzalex, Reflamid, and Dexamethasone. However, the difference in cycle three and four is now we back off the Darzalex part of the chemo for two of the weeks. So I'm getting that chemo only every other week as opposed to every week that I was previously getting it. So I was getting a you know, carpet bombing of, of chemo therapy there, enduring like nine straight weeks of weekly chemo. This is again a built into the protocol to then just allow the body to recover from that that heavy dosage. I did already get the chemo for cycle three. Day one was two Wednesdays ago. This past Wednesday, I had no chemo in terms of the Darzalex. I obviously, I'm taking the Revlimid and the Dexamethasone. And that Revlimid then, then, as I've spoken before, is 21 days of the cycle. And then you have your off period of Revlimid for the last seven days. That's still going through on a daily basis. This coming Wednesday will be cycle three, day 15, and we, that will be a chemo day. 
that's how it progresses, but we're already in the middle of the cycle three. Very exciting. Very, I'm very happy about the pain. I have some more information on the pain. We decided to do a back x-ray to rule out anything with the spine in terms of a fracture. Unfortunately, the results came back and showed that there is a compression fracture in L1. So how we proceed with that right now is being discussed. My pain clearly has subsided, but I'm still walking around with a cane and a walker. There's a procedure that can be done called a particular plasty that is an outpatient procedure and with a syringe you put in this essentially bone cement that heals that fracture and from what I've heard in 24 hours you can practically be pain free as that then stabilize the spine. It makes sense now that is what's the problem. I have this unstable spine that this muscle group is attaching to well the muscle group wants to be attaching to, to an anchor something solid. The spine is jittering around well that's going to ha have effect on those muscles which you're trying to anchor there and that's most likely what's causing the spasms that I've been feeling which I tell you can be very very painful. Now they're way less, they're less painful. I say 30% less painful than when this started out three weeks ago. There's one camp here who wants to just allow it to keep going as is since I'm making progress but to recover fully from a, a compression fracture naturally obviously the bone takes a while you're talking anywhere like two months to three months you know I've, I've been enduring this now for three weeks going on four so again we'll see how that plays out hopefully I have more information in my next week's update but that gives you some information and, and it gives me peace of mind that there was something at the root something behind this muscle pain here in the back and, and it looks like we've we've nailed it it's a bone compression fracture. How did that occur? Just remember with multibyeloma, the skeleton is almost like a Swiss cheese, brittle, an osteoporosis patient. So it, almost anything can cause a break. It's weird from what, I, what I've read, twisting the wrong way, even bending forward the wrong way. It's unbelievable. Who knows what caused it? But the bottom line is we know it's there and we just address it. Either we continue on, take our meds, go from there, or explore some option here with this uh, vertebral plasty, however you want to call it. So, hey, I want to just thank you guys for staying on. It's nice to bring you good news. Please comment. You guys have been great on the comments. Keep them coming. I love it. And I'll answer everything that you guys send me. Don't be shy. We'll see you next week. Hopefully we'll have some more good results. Keep this ball rolling forward. Cheers.